Welcome. It's an honor to have you here tonight. Thank you so very much. From around the world, I feel you, I see you. And as I travel around the globe, I meet a lot of you. Thank you for the love you show to me. It means so much to me. Thank you. My guest is in the house and I'm going to be bringing her up very, 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 very soon. But as usual, I want to thank the team, the X-Men. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you everyone for being a part of this show tonight. I have two opening remarks today. Number one, distractions. Distractions. What's the meaning of distraction? I tried to check the dictionary and it says, a thing that prevents someone from concentrating on something, concentrating on the major thing. A lot of people are too distracted because your life is crowded. Too many people that are necessary. My husband says that one of the greatest tragedies of life is to have in your life the people that are unnecessary and irrelevant to your destiny. That's powerful. What's on marble? There are people that are unnecessary in your life. Why must you continue to waste your time on such people? Distraction. You can't concentrate on the main thing. You have to explain to this, you have to explain to that. Remember, people that matter don't mind. And people that mind don't matter. If you must explain and explain and explain, then they shouldn't be in your life. If they can trust you. Distraction. Concentrate on something. This world is for specialists. Don't be a generalist. Quote and unquote. Concentrate. Put your passion on what you know is your purpose. That's my opening, my first opening remark tonight. And I want to pause and say, please share the link, 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 and be a part of what God is doing here tonight. And also my second opening remark is found in the Bible. I'm a woman of faith, so the Bible rules my life. And it is found in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 13. The Bible says, he that repaireth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. That's powerful. He that repairs evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. People that have blessed you, people that are blessing you, people that have helped you at one point in life, they may even change. It doesn't matter. Don't repay evil for good. Please, don't repay good for evil. God says, He that repairs evil for good. Evil shall not depart from his house. They've been good to you. I beg of you. I beg of you. I beg of you. I beg of you. Do not repeat people that have done you well with evil. Because whatever you saw is what you are going to read. Welcome and welcome, welcome, welcome. That's my opening remark tonight. Distraction. I will be distracted. And number two, don't do bad to the people that have helped you, no matter what happens. God bless you. I am from Felix and and this is Navigate with FFA. I have in the studio tonight a very beautiful lady. I love her so much. Her song is very unique, you know. Um, when I'm doing programs, like, no, I don't bring Shola in. But when you're talking about folk songs, I love, I love her songs. Solemn. You know, they're just shaking and shaking. I just love her music because she's authentic. That's the word. She's authentic. And sometimes I'll say to myself, ah, that person is singing like she'll love. Ah, you know. Sometimes I'm traveling and I'll just call her and say, look, I'm, I'm in the car listening to your music. She's a blessing to our world. And we're going to pull the curtains back as usual today. Remember, this Navigate with FFA is about interview people that are on their way to the top or people that are at the top. Let them be vulnerable. Let them explain to us how they got there because success is not accidental. Thank you for joining us tonight, Mrs. Shola Allison. You're welcome to the studio. You're welcome to navigate with FFA. Mrs. Allison, Okay. Okay. I'm sure she will she, she's trying to network again. She's been here. And I'm glad to let you know that 
Saturday, a few days ago, I launched my fragrance brand, perfume. And somebody reminded me that I said, look, <laughs> I've decided to live my life in such a way that if you don't listen to my messages, you will watch me on YouTube or listen to me on radio or read my books or watch me on navigate with everything or listen or smell my perfume sorry you know i was talking about distraction she's trying to join she's there i thank god for her so now you can smell my perfume and you can place your order on ffa at ffa fragrance FFF friends. Okay, Mr. Alicia, can you just disconnect and then log in again, please? If you're hearing me, I'm just trying to send a message to her now. Okay, so please, you can place your order. And if you go on my website or you go even on Instagram, you will see the post and you see the, the number. We deliver nationwide. By nationwide, I mean Nigeria, United States of Nigeria. So please, I have five different perfumes. Top notch. When you buy it, you'll be proud of me. I'm telling you the truth. Made in the United Arab Emirates for FFA. It's not local at all. I have king for men. I have queen for ladies. I have Marvel unisex. That's the luxury. That's the top, 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 top. And um, Habituno, that's my name. It has an African touch. Hoo, 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 hoo. I have Marvin. I have Dream. Dream. So Shala is here, and I'm going to be bringing her up now at FFA Fragrance. I think you can see her now. At FFA Fragrance, please, that's the Instagram um handle and then the number is there welcome mrs oh we can see her the med media team is trying to fix that please just give us a few minutes i know a lot of you i know you're here and i'm trying to welcome you thank you from spain barcelona i was there some time ago i love that place Ooh, thank you thank you Russia is present. We pray for you that God will touch the heart of your president. Let there be no war, no more war. People are dying. God bless you. Ugo State, Nigeria, thank you. I see you. You're here. Thank you. You love my hair. I'm trying to really be an African. <laughs> oh, thank you so very much. Miss Alison is here and she's trying. Kenya, thank you. Zambia, I'm coming again. That will be my second time this year at uh, Prophetess Timitope, uh, Faith Timitope. It's going to be an amazing time. It's a women's program. Thank you so very much. Lebanon. Lebanon. Is that how to pronounce it? Thank you for being a part. London. Thank you. Good evening, New York. Thank you so very much. I appreciate all of you. Switzerland. It's a global, global, global village. Well, someone is saying, I wish I had, you know, um, these teachers before now. When you wake up, it's your morning. It's a feedback. It's not a failure. So please, don't. <laughs> thank you. You'd like to get some, just go on my website or go to at FFA Fragrance. And then you can place your order. We're still trying to see how we can send it to those of you in the diaspora. We're working on that. And those states, I see you, Abuja. I see you, Ireland. Thank you. I'm getting younger. I'm going to be 60. January 28th. Thank you. I'm sending a new link to Mrs. Um, Shola Alison. And uh, in a few minutes, you're going to see her. She's a beautiful... I don't know why she's hiding her beauty. She's so beautiful. I know she's not hiding. She's going to come in now. She has a new link now. Glory to God. Don't forget, distraction is not what you want in your life. 
focus, concentrate on what you want to do. Anyone that is distracting you, you need to exit because you're living for the first time. Remember, at the last time, at the same time, distraction. No, 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 no. No distractions. And then please stop repaying. I read that scripture to you. Whosoever rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. You don't want that to be your portion at all. Don't repay evil for good when people do you good. Please do not repay. I'm bringing her up now. She's a gospel artist. She's a beautiful. I once saw her as a judge. There was a program, you know, this. Who's got talent? Something, something. <laughs> oh, I told you. She's there. Yeah. Beautiful, 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 Mrs. Shola and Lisa. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, you have two gadgets because it will be echoing. You might want to put one on silent. It's echoing if you have two gadgets. Okay, we're running. She's here and such an honor to have you here. It's a global family. And uh, thank you for coming. Who is Shola? Outside and listen. Outside being a wife, being a mother, being a popular gospel artist, being a musician. Please tell us. <laughs> and tell us. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for joining. And I must say, okay. 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 So I must say before. Before I go ahead, I must say that it's an honor for me to be sitting with Mama Liji Mori. <laughs> so on this life, as I always say, she's somebody who inspires me greatly without making much effort. Just seeing her like this, my inside will just leap. You know, so it's an honor that I'm sitting here tonight and talking with her. <laughs> so, so who is Shola listening? Mm, I am just a normal person that wants to do Can I go ahead? Can I go ahead? I believe because I have muted myself so that Maybe that's what's affecting it. We don't know why there is an echo. And so, I don't know what to do. I usually don't mute myself, but I'm, I'm trying to mute myself so that, you know. So what should she do? She should reduce the volume. My phone. I'm not using a phone. I'm using a laptop. I <laughs> So, 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 what's about now? Reduce the volume. For... Sorry about that, guys. It's her, it's my end. She needs to turn off one gadget. So maybe she logged in twice. So there's an Don't worry, we're going to, we're going to enjoy her tonight. She's fantastic. Thank you for welcoming her. Can you just take this moment to invite others? Just share the link. Share the link. I know that a lot of us are here, but please share the link so we all can be blessed. It's going to be amazing tonight. Some of you are just logging in. Thank you for being here, South Africa. Thank you. I'm repeating my opening remarks. Do not repay evil. People that have done you good, do not repay them with evil. And then don't be distracted. These are the things I said, because some of you are just joining us. While we're sorting out, Mrs. and listen. Okay, so please, if people have been good to you, what, what happens? Do not. Seychelles, I see you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You know, do not. Okay, she here now, please. So please do not repay people.
Okay, okay, she's back. Thank God. This is better. better now. You're welcome. Yes, please. Okay. 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 So who is I Shola? Was saying, okay. Good. My, uh, my, who is Shola? Listen, I am just, I said before that I'm just a normal, a normal person wanting to do extra normal things. I I was born a Muslim. I I had a very tough childhood and there are many wounds I carry because of my childhood that I experienced much deprivation. I, I wasn't really liked, you know, by my primary givers, by primary caregivers. <clears throat> um, you know, because of that, a lot of things were damaged. You know, within me, I wanted to be loved. I wanted validation. I wanted an assurance that I am I'm okay. I I didn't know that anything anything really good like that like that <laughs> you know was was in my life. And this is this this was a child that had all the qualities that you can imagine. You know, a child having. I was really brilliant in school. I was very creative. I could talk. I could fight my case, <laughs> you know. I many things I wouldn't do what I wasn't supposed to do as a child because I I, I didn't want the people, the few people that liked me, not to like me. But as I grew, you know, my journey became clearer and clearer to me. Even with and I got to know that even with the wounds I carry, I need to do life and I'm, I must do life well. You know, I. I tried all my best not to not to be what life was veering me to be. I tried not to life give me this option because of what I know. I know is the other option that I that I want. Of course, I became I became a Christian and knowing Jesus, I'm still knowing the essence, the real essence of Christ. You know, as days open, I'm still knowing more and more, knowing Him and knowing how important I am in creation makes me know that, okay, this is what life is pushing me to do. And this is what I want to do. There are many of us who are not given fair chances, who are, who are not um, favored like that, you know, with background, with people, with the right people, you know. Sometimes I ask myself this question, of course I'm asking the Holy Spirit, but why should life be this hard? why why should i have to fight for everything that that i should have why but then i don't know <laughs> and i'm always saying i will live life and i will live it well so where i have got to today by the special grace of god had not been um a journey that was really easy for me but i've made up my mind to even with my scars even with the wounds like i was some of the wounds are healing yeah, some of them are healing. I've, I've advanced in my healing journey a lot, but I believe that there are some wounds that come that might never heal. But I've made up my mind to still be a light of God in the world and bless people who are my kind and show them my scar. This is my scar. I'm, I'm carrying this scar. I'm standing like this. You two can stand. You two can do this. You know, I, of course, I'm a woman, I'm married, I have children, <clears throat> I'm a singer. I'm just somebody who wants, who wants to be the woman after God had. How God originally proposed for a woman to be. But then many things were happening on my way that, that make, um, those things make it look like, eh, eh, I shouldn't be that, I shouldn't be after God's uh, design. But I'm always fighting with them that he beat my one because I'm going to be on God's side. This is what I'll do. And God brings people my way. When you are very insistent about this is what you want. I know, of course, we say people can say life will bring your way. Do you are Christians? We will say God will bring your way. You know, God brings my way. People who I can see part time and know that yes, I'm okay. And I will achieve what I want to achieve. So I'm just in a nutshell. My name is Shola Alistair. I mean, no, I'm just you know, a normal human being who wants to do supernormal things in, in giving glory to God, in blessing humanity, as you always say. 
<laughs> it's just being simple and and shining God's light. Okay, thank you so very much, um, Shola. We're going to go back a little because when when I bring celebrities, stars, and people here, we always want to feel that we are normal. That ah, yeah. if this person can, could go through that. So we need to know uh, when you were born, where you are from. When you say your primary caregiver, are you talking about your parents? And can you just share a little with us, you know, what are these cars you're actually talking about? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I was born in the early 70s in Ikorodu, in Lagos State. I wasn't a planned child. My mom and my dad, I'm sure they just, I mean, had, my father was married to somebody else. I'm sure they just had an affair. And I happened. Of course, I didn't know it was later that I asked, you know, Shelley, what, I mean, who am I? You know, how did I get here? You know, that was when I met my aunt that told me that I was living with my dad at that time. My mommy told me it leads to, because we are not close at all. My aunt, my older aunt, you know, told me, all those things and i happened so when i happened my mom had to be taken she was in her early 20s you know fine girls that would do follow older men <laughs> so she she had to be taken to my father's mom in ikorodu that's my paternal grandma in ikorodu and that was where she was when she had me and she told me that my daddy's mommy didn't really like her and she didn't treat her well. And there was a particular night that she had to run away, like 1 a.m. in the midnight. And she, she, the vigilante people there saw her and they delayed her till morning. Then she went to her, her parents' place in Ijebode. So I was in Ijebode. Of course, my mother left me with her mom and she went to continue her life. She came back to Lagos to continue her life and married somebody else. I was living with her mom and there were many other cousins living in this. It's a family house. There were many other cousins. We were all there together. So I enjoyed that time because the, together, the, the togetherness, the communalism of all of us just sitting, sitting there waiting at the time of Asuba. Asuba is a 5 a.m. prayer for the Muslims. You know, we have to wake up at this time and do the chores that we are supposed to do. Yamamu was my my grandma, and she was very strict, loving, but very strict. So I attribute some of the qualities I have to how she raised me at that time. And, <clears throat> but because many of us were there, older cousins, younger ones that were male, young, young guys, you know, trying to teaching them, trying to teach themselves some things about girls and all of that. I mean, there was a lot of assault, you know, and you wouldn't know what was happening to you <laughs> of course, you wouldn't know what to say. And there wasn't really anybody that was really close that you could talk to. You know, all those things were internalized. But then I was very brilliant in school. Um, with all sense of modesty, I'm a very brilliant person. I was very brilliant in school. All the schools I went to, A, 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 you know. Mm. I was very brilliant in school. And I, in school, I would do debate. I would do essay, competition. I would do... I um, mean, sports, you know, <laughs> and all of that. So I was concentrating all the energy, even the pain. I was just pouring that one into my education, extracurricular activities, cultural dance, and all of that. So I didn't even know those things were getting in as I was internalizing them. Pain, you know, was being stored within me. I didn't know. But I needed to do extra as a child to please the people around me, to make them accept me in that special way. Not like my grandma didn't accept me, not, not, not like my cousins didn't accept me, but there's this special connection. I'm a, I'm a love soul, I'm a love soul. So I want more, I wanted more, but I couldn't face that I wanted more. I needed to be strong because I needed to survive. So it came a time, I was in primary five, 1983, and my grandma died. You know, mm -hmm. suddenly they said she was sick and blah, blah, blah. And she went to the hospital. She didn't come back. So, and I couldn't live with my, my mom was living in Lagos. She came, they mourned her. And after then, they needed to sort me where I would live. So they took me to Ikorodu, 
with my paternal grandma that didn't like my mom. So I had to go to a So I was in primary five. In see, some of some of some of my story, when I think about them, some of them don't connect because of the of the instability disorder. So I was in primary five when my mother Yamamu in Ijebu died. And I was brought to Lagos in Ikorodo. And that time, when you are doing transfer, you have to go back a class. So I went back a class. And I was there with my partner, grandma, going to Ilekeu, um, doing cultural dance in school, and that, and that, things, things. I would, then later, I, would, I got there primary five. But when we got to primary six, I became the head girl. And I forgot that was the head girl. It was like two or three years ago that my closest friend reminded me <laughs> that I show my own thing back, baby, our head girl and all of that. Because oh. the only way that my system could cope with the pains of that time was to just shut them out. Just to, okay, that, that was a mechanism that, that, that happened for me. So I got to go to brilliant girls, see that, but nobody would know that this is what is in the heart of this child because i didn't even have the right words to say because the people my grandmother that i was living with she didn't owe me anything i don't think she owed me anything she's not my mother she's not my father you know so i was in primary five in anglican primary school um in ikoju then I met Falake Jenyo. Falake was my classmate. You remember that I'm their senior. At that time, if you were in primary five or primary one, people know your age already. If you're in primary one, you are six years old. If you are in primary two, you are seven years old. So I was older than them, but it wasn't immediately that my grandma in Ijebu did die that I went to Ikorodu. It still took some time for them to decide where I was going to be. So I stayed for a while, not going to school. So I got to Ikorodu, I became head girl, I became best in cultural dance, this and this and this. But ups and downs were always there. My mom would come. I love my mom a lot. Somebody will say, oh, no, my mom. No, it's not where I will get the shot. <laughs> so she would come, she would bring things for me. And she would tell me that if I, if I wanted her to bring more things for me, I should come and live with her. Of course, I wanted to live with my mom. And I was a child. I didn't know better. And I wanted to go to school. But my mom didn't believe in school like that. Mm. So I got to, when I finished primary six, I ran away. I used to run away a lot at that time. Massacre. Mm. So I ran to my mom because my dad wouldn't allow me to go and live with my mom. I don't know what. No, looking back now, I'm an adult now. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe there were things that he saw about her. Maybe there was mm. a kind of lifestyle that she was living that he didn't like and he didn't want his daughter to live. Of course, that's how they meet. Both of them are the same. So <laughs> I ran away to my mom when I was in primary six. When I finished primary six and I made straight A's, but my mom didn't put me in school. I don't know. She had her own issues. I'm remembering faintly now. She had her own issues. So she went to put me somewhere with somebody. One of these people is... Okay, I can remember two. One was in Barriga. The other one was in Surulere. The one in Barriga was a very born again man that had his own family and all of that. And he had a typing school. So instead of me to go to school, I was attending his typing school. My, it, was, it wasn't my mother's family. At all. My mother is a very strong and free free spirit like that. When she meets you today, she can connect with you. You can become family. So I was living in their house and assaults, different kinds of assaults because of um, her, his own male children. Of course, we, all of us who sleep in the city room. It was just room. So this particular day, in his typing school that he had, I was the one because I, 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 every other student would have gone home I, I was the one that was daddy's child that would wait and go home with daddy. So daddy was not there. And policemen just came and whisked, they whisked me away. And I was put behind the counter because they thought I was his child. So back and forth, back and forth, they got my mom and they got to know that the man raped somebody, one of the mm. older students. So they went for something and something, something happened. So that was how I left that place. Then I can remember again, 
a family in Lansing, in Surule, that I was living mm. with, I was living with. The man mm. was a practicing Afa. All those, um, some man was all the affairs, you know, he practically had um, two wives in the same flat. So I was living there, Auntie Sherry, and all of that. So I remember that one too faintly. So I'm trying to say, I lived in different places. I, I, I experienced different things. Think, I'm always telling people, think of all these things we see on social media that I've gone through it before. Think of it. I've gone through them. You know, oh. I, I tell my stories, but there are some I can never see because I'm not the only one concerned and I respect, you know, the healing stages of other people. So all those things were going on, but inside me, I was always seeing flashes of pictures of the things that would happen. So I was always seeing flashes of, I mean, sitting down, people being around me, me telling them something, me doing this. And yeah, I could talk. I, 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 I'm just getting to know that I sometimes you don't know yourself because of the things that are happening to you. I'm just mm. getting to know that I'm not choleric as some people will think I am. I'm totally melancholic. But mm. because I needed to survive, I could be I could be choleric in a small way, but someone had to override the other personality because I needed to survive. I need I, I needed to protect myself because I used to uncle who's touching me anyhow. I was used to them telling me when I started growing breasts, I just knew some uncles around me that were taking me to the studio would ask me to raise up my hand when I got to their music school. I, I would be like, raise up. I trusted them. So I'll raise up my hand until one day I discovered that they were looking at my growing breasts. You know, so dirty, dirty things like that. So this fast forward, you know, I ran away to my mom. So later, <laughs> I found myself back in Ikorodu, of course, but he asked Jeremy, I went back that, okay, maybe they would treat me better in Ikorodu. So I I didn't, after primary six, I waited about five years before I went back to secondary school. So my dad works me into Angus Media College. That's Igbopi College, the school two of Igbopi College now. Mm. So I was there. I think I spent just one year, I ran back to my mom because I wanted my mom and dad to be together. I craved the love of both of them. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say exactly what I needed, but I needed both of them. So I went, I ran back to my mom after Angus. I, I think I did just yet one, I can't remember. So I went back to my mom. Later, I went back to school. I went to Shamsuddin Grammar School. Yeah, I did JS2 and gss3 so as for as when i was in gss3 i was already being prepped by the school to become a prefect because that's how brilliant i was i i was um um i was doing sports i would represent the school in essay competition in those busy busy things that we did in school i even started a club readers club People who read readers club in Chapsden Grammar School. Somebody got in touch with me recently and told me the club is still there. You know, but this child that had all these qualities did not have peace of mind. She looked like she had peace outwardly, but within her, no peace of mind, no love, no, no place I could look up to and have peace that these are my people. They are my people my family but all those older cousins and aunties that could be there for me they were struggling for their own lives too so my mom that i believed should be there for me saw me in a different light so i will get there so when i finished gss3 around the time i was finishing gss3 my mom would tell me eh, because when i needed anything in school maybe they said we should bring money for this and that's it's my mom that came. There were no phones for me then, no mobile phones, of course, no mobile phones, but there, were, there was no normal phone that I could reach my mom with. She would just come. She would just breeze in and to come and check. So anytime she came, I would tell her, I need money for this. So when I want, I needed to do common entrance, it was her I told. Because my dad had another wife, he was living in a different house with his wife and put me and my younger brother um who he whom he had through another woman in another house in his father's house so practically we were living by ourselves 
mm. and I was in junior secondary school. And I could have done anything that I wanted to do. It was that Falaka Jane that I said I met in primary school that was I was always following her to church. Mm. See, my story is very different, different like that. So, so mm. when I was in GSS three, it was my mom that paid for this and that and that for my history. So she she could convince me at that time. You know, I was getting older. She could convince me that it's my place that you can stay. A mini, yeah, a mini mole, so do it. You know, so I went back to her, and long story short, she had a beer parlor. Um, she had a beer parlor, and she told me that she couldn't have a girl child and go and employ a sales girl. So I was the one that must be in the beer parlor. So I told her that, okay, I wanted to go to school. She said, eh, she said, I want to lose school no more. Research, yeah, that was the time of Babangida Abacha. All those times, yeah, the all of them they went to school and they didn't find work. She is not all of them walking up and down, but I insisted. So she now, when I insisted, somebody all some all down uncles around who just said, I ah, take her to technical college. So I went to technical college. It was my GSS3 result that I used. I remember clearly we went to government technical college, I did here, and the head of department saw my results she took me to the business studies department remember that i was doing typing in that man's typing mm -hmm. school that three weeks so i was very good with it so it took me i mean they, when i when we got to the technical college and i needed to present my results that i would enter the school with they saw my gss results so if i had taken 12 subjects i had like nine a's so the mamas were saying, what, but why is she here? This is not the kind of child that mm. we, we we need here. This is, not, this is not the kind of child that comes here. She's very, and my mom gave me a sign that I should tell them that I'm the one that said I wanted to come. Oh. So I was there. So I was living with her. She had a big couple I would take care of her shop before I go to school in the morning. When I come back in the afternoon, that's where I'll be, like 12 a.m. She had a twin Biapalo. My mother is a beautiful woman. The name of the Biapalo is Figure Eight. <laughs> so my mother is really surprised by Figure Eight. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was there and different, different things were happening to me. That was the time that I actually I knew one guy that said he loves me because I needed to be told I was loved. Mm. And the things that he asked me to do, I did. You know, after sex and all of that, then I would get pregnant and I would tell him I'm feeling somehow and he would take me to the hospital. I would be given an injection and I would sleep. When I wake up, they would say we should be going home. They would give me the drugs to take. But because I loved him, I didn't want him to leave me because I thought if he left me, that was the end of my life. Oh. So it happened once, it happened twice, it happened, it happened many times. Until you know, I woke up. You know, as you are growing, you start evolving. I mean, hmm. more and more. And my mom didn't know all this. I will always be in a shop. She just wanted to make money. She just wanted to. And she would, I mean, many, many things. And I was very, very committed in church. She she was attending a CNS church. Of course, I attended, I attended the church that she was attending. I was a member of the choir. I was a member of the Ajagun. Ajagun are the, like the prayer warriors. So I'll fast and pray. I fast for seven days. She will cost me and see, ah, this fasting that yeah, you the only one. She me call him well, see Benny. Kini ko kini ko. What time? If the people prayer that they are praying, they are not getting answer. What is it your own that will now come and change everything? No encouragement, no word of affirmation in any way. But I will be there to be in a shop to take care of everything. Because she's my mom, like I want to be obedient to our parents. But the things that she was telling me to do, I couldn't do them. That was uh, that was why I became a bad child to her. I couldn't do the things. That I, uh, this example, that one day, and I'm saying this because since like last year, I got to the point of healing to a large extent. But, and I and I know I always say that my life is too small to be the focus of my life. All those things I've experienced, they are not for me. They are for my world. Remember that I said in the beginning that for my kind, 
for people who are walking the same journey with me that I'm being okay for them to know that they too can be okay. You know, so I was in a shop and this particular day, one man came. Some men will not want to sit outside. Inside of Biafalo is always like blue light, very dark. So she asked me to go inside to serve him pepper soup and beer. So I served him. Immediately, I put the pepper soup on his table I, and I went to bring the beer. She, he brought out his penis that she, I should be playing with it. So I left the food. I ran. I ran outside the show. I ran home because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. Oh, God. I ran home. I left. I ran. I went home. I didn't come back to the shop. And when my mom came, she was just talking to me. Oh, for me, oh, she shop. Oh, for one week, you won't eat in this house. And that was the way it was. Anytime I offended her. And this kind, these offenses, uh, they stem from something I didn't do in the shop. And something I didn't do in the shop, like that guy touched my bum bum. I abused him. That guy wanted to touch my breast. I said, ah, why should you do that? So she would say, ah, this is where I get money to feed you. This is why I get money to pay for that house that you are living in. So because of that, you are not, you will sleep outside. I can sleep under the stairs in our house for like two or three nights. And the neighbors will be asking me, they will call me and say, come. My, my name was Susie, Susie, like Susie. My mom named me Susie. But when she had me, there was one lady that was the model for maybe Joy So, Lock So, um, and all of that because the, I was fine. So they named me after her in that way. So they will, they will call me and say, Susie, what? Are you sure? Sure, sure. Are you sure she's your mom? And I will say, I'll be crying. I will say, she's my, I look like her now. She's my mom. I know that she's my mom. So I don't know why. So I will sleep under the tears. But it got saved me many times. So there was this auntie that always came to our shop. All those runs ladies that will come in the evening to come and look for customers. So I liked one of them a lot, Auntie Titi. I liked her a lot. And I used to talk to her. She would give me clothes. She would give me her shoes and all of that. Sometimes I would go to their house. It was a flat of babes. You know, I would go to their house, sleep there for like two days. In my heart, I was sleep. I need to remain a virgin till I get married. Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior. In Keruba and Sarah full style, in Keruba and Sarah full born again style. You know, I will not do this before I get married. That's what I will do. This I had one, one boyfriend then that both of us were saying oh, till our our wedding night. But that one was one person that I was getting some kind of love from. But he went to school and he went to have one girl. So he left me alone. So I felt left left alone until you saw the anti -TC. I would go with them to their house and play with them we'll talk and all of that until the time came I then I had another relationship that one was living at the back of my mom's shop but it will always come you know all these young young people's butterfly bellies and kiniko kiniko like that so we were doing friends and and that and that. So this particular time, I just got frustrated. Like, so what's this fine girl? I mean, what's this good girl I'm doing? Uh, I sing. I've always been a star in church when I sang. People would be like, "How oh, long been here? You know, young girl. You know, singing with singing with big aunties and uncle. So I was good in school. I I was like, "What's this good girl I'm doing?" Jerry, let me follow them and see to. They used to go to the north to go and do runs. When they are coming back, they will bring gold, bring money, bring clothes. I was thinking, what was the good girl I'm doing? Let me follow them, Joe. So one time like that, I, of course, I stole my mommy's money. I bought one traveling bag and packed my things. So I went to tell that my boyfriend, his name is Razak. I wanted to go and tell him that me, I'm following them as a city to the north. So I don't think one girl disappointed you. That's how open I can be. <laughs> so I won't think one, I won't think one girl disappointed me. I'm going you. So as I was talking to him, his sister that was in the age group of the activities, but that is serious and she, she was in school, but she only was home for holiday. Heard me. She overheard me saying it. So she came to the room, to Razak's room, and said, No, you are not going to follow them. You must go to school. You must clinical. So mm -hmm. he's 
that Razak does not allow me to go, that he should follow me to our house, carry that my traveling bag that I said I've packed, and bring it to their house. So, Auntie Morley, I'm still looking for a way to see her. Auntie Morley mm. was College of Education in Oyo. So, because Auntie Morley was in school, I, and Razak was my boyfriend. So automatically, I was living in Razak. So automatically, I became a living lover, <laughs> unplanned, you know. And my mom knew. She knew that that was where I was. Because, of course, she had something happened that she 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 sent me away from her house and said, I mean, you're always abusing those men and all of that. So I've, I've jumped over many things, but, I mean, along this line, too. So I was living in with Razak. <sighs> my eyes so Hey, any small thing, but it will beat me like go on your tongue, Lubara. It will beat me like I don't look like what oh. life I've gone through. It will be guys to beat somebody, it will beat me. It, of course, I will beg him now because I mean, it was the only person that I had. I couldn't even go back to my dad because my dad had sent words of he would disown me. He's actually what I want to be doing. I want to be following my mom. So by that time, Razak was attending Sele. You know, my mom was attending CNS. So I started following Razak to Sele. This is how God does, my well, destiny keeps opening up, you know. So it was when I got to Sele that I was attracted to, hey, they can sing a lot here. And of course, I'd been singing. I was already a professional backup singer. From that time that I was in with my mom, I just jumped over the story. <laughs> so, so I went to Sele. That was where I met Baba De Tiro. I went to Central Choir. I went to study music in school. I got to. I've all, I've been I've been born again when I was in Kenya and Sierra. <laughs> but you know things happen that it's when you have not gone through those things that you will say and those people they are bad. They are not. They don't know God. They don't. You know, I, I knew God, but I, I needed to be loved. I know that God's love is there for me, but I needed human examples. I needed to belong to humans like me. It happens to every human being. I needed a sense of belonging. So that was another relationship I had. That was the day that guy beat me because I don't know if I met a girl in his house and um, I spoke and, oh, my goodness. When I went to my mom's shop, when she saw me, as much as she didn't like me, when she saw me, people in her shop me to take them to the place of the person that beat me. Oh, I told them, it's one conductor, it's one conductor in Nagegi, uh, because I didn't have change. Because I, I, I couldn't take them to where my boyfriend was. Oh. That was how that beating was. You know, so, but I mean, I kept living life until... I go, I'm always saying that being born again is just an event. Being broken is a process. And it's a lifetime event, a lifetime process. So I got to the point where I I to know myself. That openness. That if I'm going to ever write a book, the title of my book is Broken into Shape. Broken into Shape. So I got to that time where I was broken completely. And I just told the Spirit of God that. Well, I'm not looking for love again. I just there are many things though. There are many, many things though that I'm not looking for love again. I'm just I just I uh, I'll just leave myself to you. Anything that you want, just do with me. And don't to marry again. I want I don't want to marry. Let me just find somebody and have a child for them and just be living my life <laughs> and just be doing my life. I knew my career in singing was blossoming already. So I you know. In all these years, I was growing up, I was I had become a woman. So I just said, let me, so I was living with, I was in Sele, I was in Senior Choir, I was living in my stepfather's house. Then later I packed my things and I went to live with Baba Detino. Baba Detino just died this year. And the closest to fatherhood that I experienced was Baba Detino. You know, he called me good. I, mean, I was the one that called me good. But, you know, he called me good because of my voice that he heard. I wanted to be called good, just conditionally, like from my parents, from my mom, from my dad, especially from my mom. You know, my mom will say, I can't amount to anything. 
anything. If she doesn't need anything from me, she won't take care of Come on, to Jogu Magic Beru. I know Kimi, I don't have to. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking back. Maybe she's responding to her own pain too. Looking back now, but I don't know. So, yeah, I met the people for Ijeworo. I, I still continue doing my backup singing. I worked as a secretary. That typing, I, I, I advanced in. I got to dance, I was doing 120 words per minute of typing. I mean, of shorthand and 80 words per minute of typing. That was the highest level at that point. My teachers would tell me, what are you doing here? You are very brilliant. What are you doing here? You know, then I met up this hero. I went to study music in school. I was still doing my backup singing. But all the things I had experienced before, all the people that left me and deserted me and treated me somehow made me build resilience. So as a backup singer that people think women who do music are of easy virtue, you can just do anything. I didn't do, I'm proud of myself to say that I passed through that sign, you know, as a good girl. And they were, when they say, hello, man, she, man, you can't use this word to, to, to Jeremy, you know, you know, things like that. And little by little by little by little, I started knowing myself. I started knowing how I, all the pain that I internalized, all those ones that I internalized here, yeah, I was avoiding them. The time that they stared me in the face was when I had got married. Oh. And it's begun a different journey, you know, in my marriage. You know, you know, I I thought I was okay. I thought uh, I'm okay. Now. I can live with anything. All the things that I've gone through, what can what can shake me again in life? But I didn't know that there will be a time that my identity in Christ, you know, I will know it fully. That was where that my child song came. I am a child of the Almighty. That that's where it came. That from that point. You know, I got to a point where I knew myself. I knew that you know those things are not God's mind for me. It was a, a matter of consequence of something, something, something that I met on ground. Now my life is in my hands. Of course, with God, I can choose to do it like this. So I began to shed the layers of of Iya of suffering, of the mindset of, ah, this is where we should be now. You know, I began to, the who I am exactly, the confidence of who I am that was there, that I was afraid to face because I thought it was too much to ask for. That thing started, you know, coming up. I started knowing myself more and more. I saw somebody here who said they knew me at Central Choir. And if this person knows me as a she she wouldn't have liked me because I was very because I knew what I was seeing in my in my spirit's eye, and it wasn't looking like where I was, and I was acting like what I was seeing in my spirit. The people around me were thinking, "Kido, see, man, she was are you the only person? You know, why government church people they say I'm a Mary." Um, Kinikon, they took me to wilderness to do a chair for me. They took me to Babi. They took me <laughs> everywhere so that they wanted to wash away the evil demon from me. But it's not demon. It's just my own peculiarity. It's just my own uniqueness. You know, so I got to that point. Then I did. It was my lack of singing, you know, that made me know somebody that introduced me to them at this very stage when I did it. I just did it as I had sung many songs. I just did it as I I I did things well and I became a public figure <laughs> unexpectedly just because I wanted to express myself. And you know, my parents will come and say yeah, this, this, this. I'll be like, I I don't know you. We are not friends. So not because that I am something. You know, I'm not sick because I'm something is the thing, but the thing is we are not friends. So I can't just be a friend, you know, suddenly. Mm. Then I got a child. My mother wanted to come and stay in my house. You can't come to my house. I don't know you. I don't even trust you that you won't have mm. my child. You know, different, different, different things like that. So I became that Shola listening the singer until I got to the point of knowing myself as Shola listening a tool in God's hand. So, you know, when I sang at those times and people would cry and people would send me feedbacks, I'll be like, well, they should leave me alone, Jerry. I don't have time for this one. 
It should be our song. It should be a uh, song is sweet. Eh? So why are they crying? What's wrong with them? Why are they writing this this, this thing? <laughs> why are they saying what's this? I was you know I, I'd always been a backup singer. I studied music in school. I was just doing it to survive and express myself until it got to I think it was around Okwe Ejo Uruguayere Imori Ajo Okwe my sixth album. That I began to see really that this thing is about people's souls, not about me just expressing myself. That was the time, you know. Of course, I was shedding layers, I was shedding layers. And somebody spoke, I went to one women's conference for the weekend, and somebody was talking about Osnachi. That when Osnachi died, that she had gone through blah, 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 that if Osnachi had left her husband, all, all the society would have castigated her. They would have said she's not a minister of God. She would have said this, this, the platforms that were calling her may not have may not have wanted to identify with her if she had left her husband. And the person was saying that the same thing happened to her, but she had to leave. But she didn't, she didn't come open to say that she had left because she knew that if she came open, they won't, you know, they won't give her the platforms and all of that and all of that, you know. And I got thinking that. Hmm. Osinachi, why didn't Osinachi leave? Osinachi wouldn't have left because she would be afraid. Maybe Osinachi was a get me that maybe I'm saying maybe that needed that validation. And the only person, the person that was closest to giving her that love and validation was that man. There are many Osinachis in the world today. Maybe the closest that she had to peace of mind and stability in life was that marriage that she had and there was no way you can tell somebody like that to leave it's not even because so that they will say she's married it's because she her soul was getting something from that relationship that she didn't she didn't believe that she could get from somewhere else i am i have i have some 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 awesome she inside me <laughs> i have some i have some battery a, a battered woman inside me but i'm always you know in the place of i'm going to be a blessing to my world i still there's still a lot of things i mean i'm telling i'm saying this here i believe this is the, maybe the second place that i'm saying it in as i'm getting vulnerable like this there are still some things i'm not saying but i'm getting to a point where i will say many things just for i i saw that one girl committed suicide well, around 2020 2021 she committed suicide and the suicide note that she left was because her mom didn't like her so i felt if i had come out with my story maybe the girl would have seen i mean i wouldn't I, she was in my environment maybe the girl would have seen that she didn't need to kill herself because her mother didn't like her my mommy doesn't like me mommy hates me and my children even know my mommy doesn't like me, but she could because she couldn't imagine that that girl is this woman. She couldn't imagine that. I mean, she can't imagine that what she thought I would be is not what I am. She can't imagine that that singing, that singing, and she was causing me is where I am today. You know, and it's not because I'm anything that I'm not a friend. It's just because we were no friends. And now that you should be the, the friendship gradually, you are coming like me. Yeah, me, me yeah. No, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> so I don't need that yeah, yeah, like that anymore. You know, so so I somebody said I should get to Mommy Adejima for more Do you know how close I am to her? <laughs> <laughs> because we don't distinct everywhere. So you know, so I so, so Mommy, I know you can narrate with, you know, me coming to Akure, saying this, you know, you and daddy talking to, you know, things, things like that. So because I'm sure I'm looking for that good life, I'm looking for that, I mean, orderly life. When I met you, I met you in 2008, I met you at Premier Hotel, and Tibosa organized a program, and she wanted me to come and do uh, Oberini Me. Oh, Brainy Me was released in 2000 and... Mm. So, I met you and I sang. As I sang, I sat down. I didn't know you. But that's the heart that I have. Because I knew nobody would train me for this thing that I want. I have not seen that example. And I want it. My heart cries for it. 
So I sat down to be writing. So as you were talking, I was like talking. Something was leaping within me. Like, hey, hey, you know. And you talk to a point and say, ah, so I listen, I can see you. You are sitting down there. People like people who sing, they don't sit down, they don't listen. You know, that one made me, made me think, hey, yes, I'm doing something good. And here, here, here I was, oh, a public figure already that many girls were looking up to. As you said that, I was like, hey, okay, I'm doing something good. That that thing that you said validated me. You know, maybe, of course, I had it inside me. I had the clinical, but I needed somebody to help me draw it out. Then I came to Ray, I met Mrs. Mimi, who, and you will always show me of like, come and do bring Mimi for us. I'll be like, eh. <laughs> so, I can compose something that will have women of substance like this. And she, I'm, I'm, I'm in the public face already. No, no, you know. You know, um, those times that you will call me and say, Shola, 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 I want to After the call, I'll sit down and be like, hmm. There were times I would feel there was a particular day. I felt so lonely that day. I just needed a hug. And I was telling God that God, I need you to hug me. Alas, mm -hmm. I saw my, my phone rang and it was Baba Dejuma that called me. And as, as he called me, the hug I was asking God for, I got it. You know, different, different things, different, different people, I mean, that God has brought my way, that they wouldn't even know what they were doing. But because I will appear all put together, and I mean, I'm a public figure now, so I should be fine. You know, they won't know what they are doing. Not sitting down with me, talking with me. Somebody says, Sister Shola, please forgive your mom. Please stop it. The fact that I'm not her friend doesn't mean I've not forgiven her. Please stop it. When you see people going through things, next thing is not please. I know what forgiveness is, but you are not the one that will tell me what to do. You don't know what I went through. Leave me and the Holy Spirit. And forgiving her doesn't mean we should be friends. We are not friends and we can never be friends. So, culture. So don't be uh, telling people go and forgive. I know about forgiveness. That's not what I'm asking. And the Holy Spirit is active in my life. It's not everybody that you forgive that you should that, that should be in your life based on what they show you that they are. Oh, there's one something in Yoruba mythology that they call Elenini. Some of us we don't know. It's true. My husband always tells me that if he's not married to me and he just hears this story, even from his closest friend, he won't believe that a mom can do. <clears throat> There are many things that my mom has done to bring me down. So I can't expose myself to her again. So it's, it's, an, it's a, a, a very unusual thing, unthinkable thing that is my mom that will be my old Eleni in this my life journey. Or my chief Eleni. You know, there are people that will just not like you. My mom is an Eleni to me. And I'm saying it not because I, I like to say it. I'm saying it because there are people like that that need me to speak so that they can find their own voices. They need me to speak so that they can find their own healing. I've healed considerably, but that of needing a mother. I don't need a mother again. When I had my first child, because I don't have self before, I don't different different kind of odd jobs to take care of myself before. My mother in law couldn't come immediately. I based my child myself before mother-in-law was available. So what do I need that for? I took myself by myself. Of course, God sent different, different people to me. I sent myself to school, basically. So please forgive. Please stop preaching to people to forgive. People know that they should forgive. Oh, he runs deeper than that. So I believe I need to some extent i believe i've i've tried to say who i am that the shola listen that i am not not the shola listen that is the singer that sings in jikali that people say oh, oh. so i have my own house struggles too i have my own scar that i get too of course i'm not even i don't even keep silent on tour i have wounds that i carry and that i see something and it just triggers it I see something on social media, I see something on TV, I read something, I, it just triggers it. 
but I know it's a journey that here already. I will keep hitting. So, ma. <laughs> Shall I just have one thing to tell you tonight? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I know actually I know I know that you love me I really always appreciate it and that was one of the basic reasons why there was a time I would not miss um women's conference your women's conference there was a time I would not miss um agape convention and as I've said it before I've given a testimony in agape I have my corner and there are many songs I re received a fear again, Agape. I received um, I forgot now. I received um oh mea carry a ye in Agape. And these are songs that are a blessing to people. I received this is my latest album, Mogbolawa, that I did. That one portion of that song, I received it the last time I came for for the conference. That's a that's a the possibility ground is a ground of healing for me. You know, so when you, you have ascertained your 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 own ground, you know, you don't want it to just go. So there was a time when I just came to, I would just come to Akure or for something else. I will make sure I come to Agape. Because it's a healing place for me. And when I met you, I I I just saw that uh share <laughs> okay. I know God, God wanted me to meet you at that point because I was I had many questions. Oh, like I said before, outside, outwardly, you look together and all of that. But there are questions in your heart. But when I met you, many questions were answered without me even asking again, without me even talking to you directly. Many questions were answered. I was like, hey. Nothing is wrong with you. Look at this woman. You can do it. Look at her. In Kotimoni Koche, you will be able to do it. Nothing will disturb this. Your the way you are is okay. Nothing is wrong with you. Just that one only added to the one that I had on ground that I needed to grow into at that point, at that season of my life. And that's why I will not play with her. I will not play with the the adjectives. I may not come more because, uh, because I'm busier, because things, things. And these days, I'm particularly wanting to stay home with the children. There are many requests that my, my booking staff brings to me, and I say no. So she will be wondering why she's saying no to everything. And, I would, and my band will say, yeah, we are not doing work. Like, I will say, she be like freedom to be working with other people. My children, I need to be there. I need to be home more now. You are the one who encouraged me. I wanted to do it, but I was looking like it wouldn't be possible. It was looking like I will always be busy. I will not always be at home. But you are the one who encourage. I heard you say it, and I'm thinking if I don't make, if I don't make much money, now, I'm still going to make much money. Of course, I'm not. Poor. I want more. I'm not. Poor. I'm still going to make more, much money. But it's not all about money. I can't afford to raise the kind of children like me. I can't afford not to be available for my children. I must be there. And the man wrote, see, every time I came to Agape, I was always coming with my children. Huh. I would come with them. You know, so, so I know you love me and I love you too, but I'm used to saying I love you. If I want to say I love you to someone, you'll be heavy in my heart. <laughs> I will do, I will use something to say it. But for me, to go, I say ah, I'm learning it. I say I say it to my children though. Right. Yeah, my children, because I I know that I I, know that I have to be intentional with it. But for me to just open my mouth and tell somebody I love you, ha. you see, oh my, oh. and thank you for for the gifts you gave me last month. I love oh, yes, them. I go to see you. Got to see. I refuse to give <laughs> any out. Everything <laughs> on my phone. What a <laughs> night. Oh my God. Shall I see comments? God, God bless you and bless you and bless you and take you to the next level. Uh, Amen. This Amen. story is for the world. Mm. It's not just for you. You went through it because of destiny. Many destinies. And thank you tonight for being vulnerable. My notes, I can't even ask you questions. Just one more question before we close, and then you're going to please 
sing a song for us. It doesn't matter. Somebody <laughs> said he, he doesn't understand one word from your own board. He's always glued to, you know. Mm. So why do you why do you have that signature scarf? Okay, my gilly. <laughs> you know, I yes, ma. I just want to be African. I've always wanted to be African. I knew that. So of course, I'm from the church, the life's marketplace. But I know I'm not called to just the church. I know I'm called to our people, my kind, as many as can identify with my music. And I want to be authentically African. So I don't cover my head because of religious reasons. I cover my head because I want to look African all through. That's just the reason why. And I, if you check my Ejuro album cover, I think I started getting it well around my sixth album time. I was just, I would just wrap it anyhow at that time. But I started evolving and getting better and getting better, you know. So it's just something, you know, God shows you visions about yourself. You just see, sometimes I have a flash of, of how I will look, how I should look. Before, I used to do Ankara, Ankara, Ankara. And now, now it's Adire, Adire, Adire. I just want to be African. God made me an African for a reason. I know there's a mistake why I'm African, why I'm, why I'm Yoruba. You know, I would have decided to sing in English if I wanted to. I studied music in school. I was one of the best that that department had ever produced. I was best major, piano minor, Western music, all the music they were taught. And I'm, I'm, I'm a brilliant student. But I want to sing in Yoruba and I want to appear as African as possible. Because I believe that's a calling for me. Thank you so very much, Dola. Thank you. You know, last Saturday I officially launched my perfume. Your perfume. Brand. <laughs> and this is one of them. And when I was designing this, I had you in mind. Did you see it? It is that's the gele. Oh, <laughs> ah, that's true. Yes. I see it, oh. it's, it's named after me. It's to know it's the only African themed fragrance that I have. But I had you in mind when I was designing it. So you see, oh. so Shala, I owe you one for free. Yes, ma. <laughs> the comment. The reviews I have gotten by reason of this perfume, this particular Itunu, oh my god. Shala, oh. you're going to be wearing you spray it on yourself. I know and you, you know, know. All, my, all my perfumes are made in United Arab Emirates for wow. FFE. They're not made wow. in Nigeria. Wow. So I owe you this the next time we see. Yes, ma. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah. what a I know blessing. you. I know you, ma. For excellence. I still said it in my last concert i did in july for my table i was talking about how i just made because it was there and when i talked to the point of meeting her in agape and i said you know they are the most excellence personified that's who they are so i know i know you thank do you. things excellently <laughs> thank you <laughs> i appreciate every people joined from everywhere japan australia this place that place thank Thank you, Shola. Please, this is a blessing. You Thank are you, a ma. blessing, and some of us we love you Ooh! and your songs. Of course, you know my husband is your. Oh, <laughs> is your I don't want to be number one fan because I am your number one fan. So he comes after me. Ah, I'm Andrew. I'm Andrew. Imagine love. I am yes. my play. So Shola, we Thank want you to sing a song before we close tonight. Everybody's loving you. <laughs> One song we yes, please seen. go at FFA Fragrance. We you can order online. We deliver nationwide, Nigeria. For now, I have fun. Mm -hmm. Shall I please sing a song before we close to what song will I sing? What song will I sing? What, what song will I sing? Oro Olua, Oni Loaiche, Ife Olua, Oni Loaiche. Imo Olua, Koni Lolaiche, Omori Eko Bamileru, Omori Eko Mimiloka, Otile Eko Fomilaya, Shugbomo Kwinu Natsi Di Imu Alorungo Dodoni, 
Si be mo pinu lati mo kon ro tori mo mo pe oro re ti mi do o ni lo la ise and we are getting ready for winning next because Shola is one of our yes. top most guest artists. Yes, yes. Thank you My so much, going. much again. You're gale. <laughs> People are commenting. That's you gale, eh? <laughs> That's, I had Shola in mind when I was deciding this. It's so fine. Thank you so very much, Shola. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much. So, as we close, she will still be, she will continue to sing until, you know, until we leave. <laughs> Our mm -hmm. love to Toyi and the children. God bless and yes, praise you. Yes, ma. Yes, yes ma. Yes, ma. Yes, it will be on Amazon very soon. Mm. By God's God. By God's God. Okay. Yes, so please, the floor is yours until we close. Okay. Until I am the child of the Almighty. Mugbo. Mm. Mugbo. I am a child of the Almighty. Mugbo. Mugbo. O coming go. Magbagbe ilerino. Mugbo, Mugbo, that's your own father, Mosi Diomo. Mugbo, Mosi Go, or come go, my baby, Larry. No, Mugbo, Mugbo, that's your own father, Mosi Diomo. Mugbo, Mosi Go, Baba. The spirit of adoption is upon my soul. Multidiomo, a meat idiomo, a I am a child, the Almighty. Mugbo, I am a Motibo, <laughs> Ma bomo ona imole ima dungo wa je ninu adun ye o obirin mi mo pe lola obirin mi mari ma shoge mari gbere bi eni e gbendu ma tun sapa genge emi lo luro lowo ko emi ni Emi langeli omo ele ju mare lo mo mi emi ni ya ko wa eke mi mo fi gbogbo ara se wa ele da mo dupe sa sise se da mi e ba mi o what other one should i sing ona imole imo pe what you are doing? Oh, eh, Ibaola, told you all, and 
Bolawa Fire Raye Boti Bell Lomo Bell Ole Ipada. This is the part I received and I'm happy. Aye Raye Aye Raye Aye Raye Mogbolawa Boti Lo mobile, oh lay paddle. I hear a year. If I be a If I totoro mini mini, Taba oh, I call Olo lo fe fe ro mi la ishe to Afu ye ga e ga e ti yo she ge Jigbini jigbini bi a te ke Ka bi ye yo mo she ba re O ba to ju go go ba la Mo she ba re o mo she ba re Mo fo ri ba le mo gba wa soke Mo she ba re o she ba re Mele o komo wai Kabi e si o mo she ba re O ba to ju bo bo ba lo Ami Hmm Thank you.